All right, folks, welcome back to the channel. I'm trying something a little different today. I'm trying to record through my GoPro Hero 8 instead of my cell phone. Um, just kind of seeing how I like it. Uh, but anyways, the, we're back with the Cadex Vista. I decided that I was going to put it into my Floss 3. I know a lot of you all said to do it in the Gecko, but the fact of the matter is I race way more than I fly Acro. Um, I mean, I do, I do want to get another uh, Vista to throw inside my, my Gecko, but um, we'll cross that road when we get there. And anyway, so it does actually, it works out pretty darn good in this build. I know um, the Floss 3, uh, the only real thing I had to modify here is I, had, I just had to buy taller standoffs. And yeah, I could have gotten with, away with a little bit shorter by about 10 mil, but um, these are just what I had lying around. So. I just used what I had on hand, and it turned out to be pretty nice. This thing actually flies really, really well. A um, couple of things that uh, we'll point out in the video as it's rolling here in the background is if you turn off low latency mode and make it and force it into high quality, even though you are only recording on the goggles, it provides a extremely nice. Uh, picture. Uh, I, I'm, it's not as nice as the 1080p, but I mean, for what you're going to slap up on YouTube, after YouTube has their way with the compression algorithm and all that stuff, it actually looks pretty darn good. Uh, I'm pretty, pretty impressed with the quality that you're getting out of just the goggles. Um, a couple things I don't like about it is the, the goggles auto start recording as soon as you arm and it automatically shuts off as soon as you disarm. Um, I'm pretty sure you could change that. I really haven't uh, explored into it, but you can't really have like much of a uh, a good ramp up to the video. It's either it's just instantly on and then instantly off. It's not like you could like land and then like fade out in a video clip that you're trying to make because it just wants to just shut off like that. But either way, it uh, you know it's perfectly usable. Um, so you know I've got some video here just kind of flying around, kind of testing just getting a feel for the quad. Uh, it does need a lot of tuning. This clip here, um, it was cold, windy, super wet. So I wasn't really going to push it. I didn't want to risk crashing this thing and frying it because that ground was just soaked, just damp as hell. Now, with it being on that high quality mode, the latency is just, is just far too high to actually race with um you end up just crashing everything uh so this is with the low latency turned on and obviously doesn't doesn't make me immune to crashing into things um just doing a little bit of durability testing right there uh and you, as you can see the the, the picture is not quite as nice i start to get that focus mode bars on the side i have it set to auto so focus mode's not always on but it kind of comes and goes the latency feels just fine i'm not a world-class racer by any means or i'm not I'm not even a good racer at all, but you know the the latency doesn't really affect me all that much. Um, so it, obviously you can see it's a different day, uh, different flying conditions, a lot less wind. Um, I did just get done flying my Floss 3.0 light analog quad, um, super light. I ended up having a just a wicked crash of that thing, broke all sorts of stuff. So I'm kind of getting used to the feel of this quad in this clip here. Um, it is definitely heavier using a heavier 6S LiPo. Um, it's a heavier quad, you know, in general. But uh, I know for racing, it, you know, um, if you put enough packs through this, you'd be able to hold your own. It flies pretty darn good. And that, that just, that HD view coming through the goggles is something different. Um, we need to try to figure out, uh, in my club, we need to try to figure out how to make the, uh, the digital and the analog play play well together during a race um you know as, uh, with the analog you've got a bunch of different channels that you can select from but with the dji you have uh seven or eight and they correspond to different frequencies in the 5.8 gigahertz band but trying to figure out how to deconflict the analog and the digital in the same race is something that we haven't quite uh started working on yet um, but now there's myself and another guy there that have the DJI uh, digital FPV system. So 
is something that we're going to be testing out. And this is also with the Delta 5 um, race timer. It's, it's a great timer. And uh, yeah, there, that's the USS drum in the background. Just, just for fun. But I'm really liking the way this thing flies. And I think that HD racing could definitely be a viable option in the future. But, you know, the build, the build was pretty easy. This unit here is definitely built for us, for this hobby, unlike the original air unit, which I've always said, I don't know who it was designed for or what industry, but I don't think it was designed for us in the beginning. DJI keeps making huge improvements to the entire system, making it just better and better. And I definitely recommend if you're on the fence about doing HD, just do it. Um, you won't regret it. I mean, yeah, your, uh, your bank account might hurt for a little while, but it's pretty darn nice. So the Vista unit has been, you know, I put this thing through hell in the last couple weeks and it just keeps on working. Um, I did have one wicked crash that first night or the first afternoon that I was out flying this thing and ended up smoking motor, smoking ESC, just causing all sorts of heck with this thing, but got it back up and running and been racing it. Uh, just kind of just practice kind of fun races and it works really well. Um, I could definitely trim this down by getting shorter standoffs, kind of making it a little bit cleaner of a build. These are just kind of, it's just kind of a piece together quad. So yeah, the motor wires are extended and it looks terrible, but it actually flies really well. It's very, very flyable, especially in a race environment where um, latency can be an issue. I think on average, from what I remember in the clip, it was anywhere from like 23 milliseconds latency, which, um, yeah, that's not that bad. It's definitely not as fast as analog, but I think being able to see more will actually pay off in the end rather than just having ultra high latency. I'm an older individual, so latency is not really, you know, these things are late, uh, less latency or have more latency than most, I think. Um, but anyways, really well built uh, piece of gear. I really want to get a hold of another one and put it inside that gecko. Um, even though I know darn well, I probably won't fly that gecko very much. I definitely race more than I fly acro. I have not tried a long distance run. Oh, by the way, all those clips, 25 milliwatts. All of them are at 25 milliwatts. Um, I haven't tried doing a long range uh, flights with this, which the weather's been kind of iffy. It's been really rainy, cold, windy, and then there's a few days where it's nice out and, you know, wife's got me outside doing work, building decks and stairs and all sorts of stuff. So I haven't had a ton of time on really nice days to go out and do some long range testing, but I definitely, get out of here. I definitely plan on doing that. So stay, uh, stay around, keep checking out the channel, click that bell icon, like, subscribe. And when that pops up, um, that'll be a big one. I'd like to compare this to the DJI full-size air unit and then also compare it to one of my analog quads running, you know, um, like a 600 milliwatt VTX. Just kind of, I know it's not comparing, app, it's apples to oranges. Yeah, they're both fruit, but they're still kind of different. So that should be a pretty interesting experiment. Um, all right, folks, thanks for stopping by. Thanks for checking us out. Let me know what you think. Let me know if you think this is a good idea, if this is something that you think will help propel the DJI digital FPV system into the racing world, at least in the amateur ranks. And is this something that you're interested in? Uh, I'd like to know. If you have any questions about this setup, uh, about this build, about the, the Cadex Vista unit, please let me know. Um, check out my Etsy store where I sell things like these uh, these radio grips. These are a very popular item. A lot of people like these. Check this out. Um, if you don't have a set, get them. You'll thank me later. Um, visit my Patreon page. I do, uh, I do a lot of early access stuff, some giveaways, things like that. Go ahead and check that out if you really want to support me. And if you're looking for anything, please click those affiliate links down in the video description. Those things help me out. They are the only thing that kind of keeps me going in this hobby financially. Um, I try not to dip into the family funds for this hobby. So those affiliate links, those are the things that keep me going. Those are things that help bring in more products. It helps 
me out tremendously. All right, folks, thanks for stopping by. Thanks for checking this out. And we'll do some more HD racing and I'll get back to you. All right, guys, have a good one.